Back to it. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is is start to understand what the limitations are, right? So I, I mentioned our goal here is to think not only in two dimensions, but in three dimensions. And um, we're going to have to make things smart. And uh, I'm giving you a bit of a disclaimer right now. I'm going to be doing something at some point tonight that almost none of you are going to thoroughly understand the first time through. OK, so at that point, I'll probably just ask you to stop trying to follow along and just look at what I do. OK, but that might be a few segments along here. Anyway, uh, the first challenge that I want to present to you is, is what happens when you take these things into uh, three dimensions rather than two dimensions. OK, so um, you're all familiar at this point with the command extrude, right? Simple enough. Um, well, extrude in, um, in Grasshopper functions very, very similarly, where all it does is it takes uh, a curve or a uh, surface, and it will extrude it whatever value you give it. The difference between uh, the Grasshopper extrude and the Rhino extrude is that you have to be very, very careful about the direction that you assign the extrusion. OK? So and that's, that's my first sort of um, foreshadowing to the problem that you're not going to understand later. But let's, let's first do this. OK, so circles. Right now, these are curves. And if I want to extrude them, uh, the extrusion function is really under surface. Um, and you go to surface tab, and under the freeform panel, you have this right here, um, extrude. OK, so whether or not you're extruding a curve or a surface, the extrusion command is under the surface tab. OK, so um, let's drop in the extrusion component and really understand what it's asking for. OK, um, the extrusion component is obviously asking for, this says, a base profile curve or surface. OK, and I need to uh, sort of you know, take a side road here and explain something to you with this. Um, some of you by now have probably noticed that there's this little icon over here to the left. Um, the little swirly one here is what's called an, an, a, uh, a generic geometry. Or a, yeah, I guess it's just a gene geometry parameter. But anyway, if you look over here and you open up the geometry panel, um, don't get confused with this curvy one, which is actually a curve, and this curvy one, which is just geometry. Geometry will read and, and uh, communicate and pass through um, any geometry, geometrical data. Okay, so that's an empty housing for anything. But a curve will only read a curve, and it will only feed a curve to other um, elements, okay, and other components. So just be very careful of that. So um, that's going to accommodate both uh, curves and surfaces. The other input is where we're going to have to um, introduce something that's new to all of you. Um, but if you've taken any bit of physics, um, then you should know a little bit of what it is. Okay? The extrusion direction. Okay? The extrusion direction has to be in the format of a vector. Okay? And you're going to hear me say this many, many times throughout this class. A vector has, for all purposes in this class, in almost any case, has uh, two um, attributes to it. It has a uh, direction, and it has a magnitude in almost all cases. In fact, I think all cases. So direction and magnitude. But it's only asking for one input. So I'll show you kind of a clever way of dealing with that. But first off, let's, let's plug those curves in and, and just see what it does without um, any information. So we plug the curves in, and it doesn't do anything. So we need to give it a vector to read. And so obviously, you're thinking, some of you might be thinking, well, we've been working in this vector tab, so maybe I'll find something there. Um, go under the vector tab. And under the vector panel. And I'd like you to drop in one of these right here, uh, particular, one particular, um, the Z. Okay. Um, unit Z, unit Y, unit X. Those are direction, they're basically direction only. 
Okay, so when I drop in unit Z, it looks a little funky. Um, you can see if you read the output, it's going to give me a vector because the icon says, uh, it shows me the vector icon. It says vector, it says world Z vector. Um, it's all good. Uh, the F value is what's called a factor, or in this case, it's the magnitude of the vector. How far in that direction is this vector going? Um, and it's set to a default value of 1. So when we plug that in, that's what you get. You get a series of rings. If you want to have, um, if you want to have different uh, what am I trying to say here? Oh, if you want to uh, feed it a different type of information, all you need to do is just change the format of the curve. I see some blank faces. Am I going too fast? No? Okay. All right. So um, basically, I, you know, it's a, it's a pretty simple idea. The extrusion just needs the geometry it's extruding, and then it needs a vector. Two parts, direction and magnitude. Um, if you want to actually have it be solid, you, you have a few options. Um, you can do, for those of you who are a little bit more experienced with Rhino, um, you can do the cap command that exists in Grasshopper. I wouldn't suggest it in most cases. In most cases, what I would do is transition a curve to be a surface before extruding it, which is pretty easily done. Um, and I'll show you how. The cool thing about these params is that um, they're, they seem pretty dumb. You know, like I, if I pull out a, a, a curve param, or rather a surface param, right? So if I pull out a surface param, that's this one right here. It's going to say surface. It has one input, one output. Basically, it's an empty housing for surfaces so that I can connect it to other things. It's smart enough to understand when the geometry you give it can become a surface. So it's kind of a little shortcut for you guys. So basically, if you take this circle and you plug it into surface, then they all become surfaces. Similarly, um, when I take those surfaces and I plug it into the B value of the extrusion, then those extrusions become um, capped extrusions. Solid, well, solid, because neither Rhino nor Grasshopper actually produces solid geometry, okay? But it acts like a solid. How do you make it actually solid? You input, um, you input this surface param found under the param panel. So this is under param geometry. Um, well, well, actually, that's a very good question, and that's exactly where I was going in my next segment. So uh, I'm going to stop this video here, and then I'm going to talk to you about the redundancy of geometry. Good question.